Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are going to be talking about the Wade Game Engine. Wade stands for what? Another damned engine? Actually, I have no idea what Wade stands for, but I think that's what a lot of people are starting to feel. We are absolutely spoiled for choice when it comes to game engines, and this is another one. Uh, this is a HTML5 focused game engine. It is free and open source. It's made by a company called Chili, um, let's see... Clockworkchili.com uh, is the website it's available at. And you can actually run this guy completely inside of the Chrome browser if you wish. Uh, in my case, I'm actually downloaded the standalone version. There are builds available for uh, Windows, Mac, and Linux, or you can download just the framework. And just the framework is a key thing to talk about here. You can look at Wade as two products. First off, it is an underlying uh, media framework built on JavaScript basically for providing the gaming functionality. Think uh, create JS, Phaser, that kind of technology, it implements the low-level cross-platform stuff. And then there is an editing environment built on top of it. Uh, I can go through all the details here, uh, but you know what, I'll link this down below. You can read it yourself. It's got most of the stuff you'd expect. A nice symmetric editor in there. Uh, there's tile map supports, there's um, physics support, etc. You can run in WebGL, 2D, etc. You can use uh, event-driven or entity component system. It's all very flexible in what it allows you to do. Uh, one of the nice things is there are loads of tutorials to get you started on this. So I'm gonna break, basically go through this one pretty quickly. Uh, here you see when you first download Wade, this is what you get. Um, you can create your own blank projects, you can load an existing local project, or they've got a lot of stuff tightly integrated to their servers. Um, now, one of the things that's kind of interesting to point out before we go on, this is an open source project, but I actually have no idea how you get the source code. There's no GitHub page or link or anything like that. You can download the source of your project, which will include the Wade framework, but I don't know if you're actually getting the editor. So I, I, I don't know exactly what's going on there. Uh, one thing to do, actually do be aware of before we get too far in uh, is their license. Now, this is an open source license, but it's their own license. And that's always a little tricky because that means you've got to vet it to a certain degree. They do a top level summary and essentially it says do what you want, uh, just don't compete with us. Uh, so you cannot create a product that competes with Wade. So you can't make another game engine per se. Do go through this to fine print because uh, it might have something to trip you up. It's fairly liberal license, but uh, there are some gotchas in there. So do check that out if you are um, looking at making a commercial product with Wade. Again, you're totally allowed to create commercial products, but there are some lines, so you can't create a competing game engine per se. So here we are back at our environment. We can go ahead and create one of their um, remotely available. And you got to see, you've got a number of uh, video tutorials available and linked down here all on YouTube. So we'll go back here, we'll open an example, and we'll make the uh, platform example. Now you'll notice you can also... Um, have the uh, option of seeing how they made this actual example as well. That's pretty cool. So you click this and it's going to go ahead and download all of the resources off the internets. Uh, we'll give that a second. And then it will load in the editor. Now the editor is actually pretty full service, but they've done something they've, that I'm not that keen on. Is they First off, they've obviously rolled their own user interface and that's always obvious. Uh, the second thing is they've used like non-standard icons. It, it, it actually kind of makes it look a little bit less professional, to be honest. It's funny, like if you just took this this title bar away, this is personally obviously just my opinion, but if you just took this away and gave it a standard menu, it, it would look 10 times more professional. But that's one of those things that, you know, either here nor there. So what you see here is the scene that you're working on or your game level. Pretty straightforward. Middle mouse button scrolls around. Uh, entities within said scene. Here are all of your uh, scene items or the instances. You see it, they'll select as they go. Uh, you have a manipulator when you've selected an item. So for example, I could manipulate it here. I can change the sizes there. And when you have something selected in your scene, over here you will see it opens up in this uh, inspector-like view where you can set the values based off the type of object in your scene. So we see we got here, we'll click this main character. Uh, here, I'll select her this way. Um, you will pull in the details of it. So there is the sprite component. Oop. And then animations attached. And the various different animations there. At any time, you can drill down one level further and see the JSON that is actually powering this logic. And then we go over here, you can see drill in a little bit more. Uh, some properties of dealing with the scene uh, or the, the entity in the scene, how it's to be treated. Uh, you can see here there is this new flowchart based programming option. Uh, I haven't actually seen it used and I haven't jumped into it in great detail, but basically you can control your script using a flow graph of 
of boxes. Uh, but again, I haven't seen a lot of use that was just added, I think, in the last version. So it doesn't seem to be the most used thing in the world. Over here, you can see behaviors. This is where, if you're used to a component-based engine, this is basically where components come in. Uh, they've got some pre-confined components, or you can create your own. And see here, you can add a particular behavior in. Um, yeah, and that adds the particular behavior to that object. I'll, I'll show you exactly how this works in a second. But you see this guy has a physics object and a platform character component. And each one of these things has various different properties available to it, like so. And um, here are all your, your various different physics objects that control this character. Um, and then finally, we come over here and there's the functions. And this is how you can basically code your entity into the world. So you see here, um, the, the yellow ones are things where we've actually implemented some game logic. So in the on die event, they've gone in, they've entered this particular code. And then you'll see here, the code is using the wade.loadscene. Well, wade, again, is the underlying framework that provides the functionality that we're dealing with here. And the cool thing about that is we've gone on back over here, you'll find wade is actually pretty well documented uh, in terms of... Um, what each one of these particular things does, uh, your logic that you need, etc. They are all pretty well documented here, which is nice to see in a project like this. So if you're working with a sprite, you can get all the sprite functions right here. So uh, decent documentation to go along with it. So I'm back over here. So you see again in the uh, say on key down event, they fire off this code. So if you want to trigger certain code based off certain activity, you basically just add it from a function level or create your own custom code. And then boom, there it is. Um, down here, you see the items that go together to create your game. Here you see the world graph. So basically this is um, all the folders and structures. This is basically your, your file structure for this game. And here we can switch between modes. And here's one of the cool things we've got going on. Well, first off, we've got a code editor. Let's go back to the file folder view and I'll pick a code file. So app.js, they have got a full blown code editor built directly in here. And as you can see, we get full code completion uh, and suggestions, etc. So wade.load scene. Uh, like that, and then you see here, I think we do get hints. Yeah, so there it hooks into the documentation, so you can actually um, not have to look at that documentation to figure out you know, what function calls, etc. you need. So it's nice to see a full-blown code editor built right into the tool. You can, of course, use your own tools, such as um, you know Visual Studio Code or Sublime Text or whatever you want to use for editing, but there is this editor built correctly or directly into this product. Another neat thing that we've got going on here is there's the prefab browser, and the repo browser. Now the repo browser hooks up to their actual repo somewhere. I don't know where it is, uh, but you see here, you've got various different options you can bring in to, to instantiate your game. Now a lot of these things are all under CCO license and a lot of them come from different packages. So this is uh, Kenny NL. Uh, another one was Open Game Art, et cetera. So they've hooked into a bunch of uh, avail freely available assets, but we can just go ahead and use them. Uh, some of this is logic, so you can get a hold of scripts, um, particle systems, um, and then we've got like a character set, et cetera. So they've hooked up a bunch of um, existing free assets that make it really easy for you to go ahead and use them in your game. So for example, if I needed a shop, I could come up here, missed, let's go shop. And I got a bunch of storefronts. Um, you see always where it's from and what licenses under is down here. So if we wanted to go ahead and instance one of these, I could grab say a blue shop and drop it into the scene. This will copy it down, create our new object, and position it in the scene. As you see, we've got manipulators for how we can go ahead and position this guy further. But there is now a shop in our scene. So I can go back here, you'll see it's created a sprite property for us. We could add an animation to our sprite if we so wished. I'll go over here to the properties. Again, um, not much we need to do here, but we're gonna go here and add a behavior to it. And we'll go ahead and add a physics object behavior to this guy, like that, and plus, uh, we edit the shape on it. The default, that looks pretty solid. But you can sit here, you can say an, um, a box-based, a circle-based, or a polygon-based uh, collision mesh around our shape. Like that guy. You can set up various different things here, such as, where is restitution? Gravity scale, linear dampening, da da da, da. Restitution. All right. So let's dial that back down a little bit. Like so. And we'll run it in our game world. And nothing happened. All right. Oh, I'm static body. As turn that into a dynamic body and we'll run it in our game world. And there you see our thing just sort of falls into the world. Pretty straightforward, pretty easy so far. Now, if you want to start adding logic to it, you can. So um, 
let's just do a very quick one. So here we've got this guy here, so we could put it and add it to scene or whatever. But we'll do an on click handler, and then here you just do your logic. So console.log clicked on thing like that. So that's how you would apply logic to a particular event. Of course, you've got your whole Wade framework underneath, and you do get code completion here in this little editor as well. So that should be straightforward, should just work. You saw on the fly there was error um, detection being shown there. And we'll go ahead and run that now. And then I click this guy and you'll see there is a console down here. So that is how simple it is to wire up code to your game objects or entities. That is how you add uh, various different properties to your NC. You could create your own of these as well. These can these are just straight up um, JS files that could be in your scene. I think if we go back to the scene viewer, as soon as I figure out how. Uh, platformer scripts. Da, 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 da. So you see here, ladder. And here, da, 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 ladder. So that is simply a code function that basically defines um, a behavior that's being added to our scene. So then you can now use that behavior. You also see you can you can wire up dependencies of your behaviors. Like here you're saying that this particular one requires the physics object behavior to work. Um, but you've got a full, um, basically, uh, yeah, this would be component-based system available to you. Uh, the ability to define custom components is quite simple. Uh, the framework is all there. And the cool thing is, once again, there is a ton of help available. And a lot of times when you're working through things, you can actually get, oh, how, how do I do this? Or show me more or, or show me additional details. And they are available elsewhere. Now, I don't know what else to show. Um, yeah, that's about all I was going to show here. You can build off in the cloud. And then finally, when your game is ready, set, and ready to go, you can click here and download and basically have it generate a build for you. And then you basically are just downloading a zip file containing your final build version. Or you can just straight up download the source code like that. So you can see here the targets available are Windows, Linux, and Mac OS, as well as uh, Android app. And of course, you can grab the source code. So obviously, you can run this in a browser as well. And that's ultimately what you're generating here. So either one of any one of these is basically just a bundled HTML app. Uh, one last thing to show is if you go on back here to the website, they've got some pretty cool stuff in the form of snippets. So if you're looking for uh, how to do a particular thing, such as say, rotate an object, you come on in here and you will see an actual demonstration, and then the running code that goes along with it. So if you're looking for a specific function to do, you'll find a lot of times it's here. And if you're looking to learn how to do something, you will find a lot of times there is a tutorial for doing exactly what you're trying to do. Plus, out of the box, there is a breakout clone, nice symmetric adventure. Um, oddly enough, and I'm not really sure why this is here, there's match three editor and a hidden object tool. So this is specified towards those two particular genres of games uh, up here in this menu. But uh, yeah, that's about it. That is the Wade game engine. Um, like I said, if they just tweak the UI a bit, just say use menus as opposed to icons, this would actually look a heck of a lot more polished. But getting the, aside from the looks, it, it is quite full functioning. You see over here, I guess this is one thing I didn't show you. Uh, you can create new scene objects this way. So there is a new scene object in our game. We can bring our sprite in to work with it. Or we can create paths. We can create joints for physics, uh, scene object groups. Uh, he, and then here you get into your tile map editing or your isometric map editing. Now, I'm not 100% certain that there is a full blown uh, tile map or isometric editor. You can work with tile maps, and one of the examples is tile map based, uh, but it doesn't seem to be like a click by click style editor. So it doesn't seem to have a direct integrated editor along those lines. You still need to. Um, put together your tile map somehow. I actually didn't figure out how to do it, but you know what? It might just be an oversight on my behalf, but I don't want to promise you a tile map editor being built in when it doesn't appear that there certainly is one, or at least if there is one, it isn't immediately obvious how you access it. Anyways, that is the Wade game engine. It is free. It is open source. As I mentioned at the very beginning, it is under its own semi oddball license. So do be sure to read this before you continue. But the summary basically sums it up. Um, and like I said, you can distribute non compiled versions of the source code, or you cannot distribute non compiled versions of the source code, you cannot um, compete with Wade directly. And really, that seems to be about the limitation. So that there is the Wade game engine from uh, Chili uh, Clockwork Chili. 
Uh, again, completely free. And if you want to check it out um, without any kind of a download going on, uh, you can literally just launch the editor right here. Unfortunately, it does require Chrome. So if you're not running Chrome, well, I guess you can't launch it. But if you are running Chrome and you want to check this out, just head on over to their homepage, which I will link down below, obviously, and click launch the editor and it will load pretty much the exact same experience up just in your web browser as opposed to uh, the way I got it, which basically involves, I just downloaded it. Uh, and then you extract out a zip file and it looks like this. So, and it comes in at, I think 60 or 70 megabytes uncompressed. So it's not huge by any definition of the word. And then a lot of their functionality is hooked away. Um, so they've hooked into their central repository as we, we showcased earlier here with the repo browser, there is a bunch of content and assets and uh, sample code available or UI widgets, etc., available on their server somewhere. So you're, you're, you know, obviously your install can grow a little bit over time, but yeah, that's about it. Uh, so that is the Wade game engine. Let me know what you thought of it down below. Um, yeah. All right. I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.